Good morning. Welcome to Chits. Thank you for joining us this morning. We're finishing up with our series from the Gospel of John this morning. I'm going to read um, John 17. And it's really my prayer that I hope that our series through John um, taught you something about Jesus. Um, I've given you something else that you have, maybe have missed um, about who Jesus was and what he did and how he really cares for each one of us. Um, before we go going to read scripture together, let's pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that we can come to your word this morning because we know that this word is alive. This word is more than just uh, the letters and the words that we are reading. It's life that you want to give to each one of us. Thank you that we can can hold on to this world in a word in any situation we are, that we can go back to um, to your word the whole time, that we can build our life on it. Because it's about who you are and what you are doing and that you care for each one of us. Thank you that we can work through scripture, that we can go to scripture looking for you, that we can go to scripture with the knowledge that you are looking for us you want to work in our lives open our hearts and our minds up for your word this morning pray this in your holy name amen our scripture reading this morning is from john 17 john 17 let's start from verse 1 after jesus said this he looked towards heaven and prayed Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that your Son may glorify you. For you granted him authority over all people, that he might give eternal life to all those you have given him. Now this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. Verse 6. I have revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me and they have obeyed your word. Now they know that everything you have given me comes from you. For I gave them the words you gave me and they accepted them. They knew with certainty that I came from you and they believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I'm not praying for the world, but for those you have given me, for they are yours. Verse 11. I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world. And I am coming to you, Holy Father. Protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. And then verse 15. My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of it. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is the truth. As you send me into the world, I have sent them into the world. For them I sanctify myself, that they too may be truly sanctified. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I conclude a scripture reading. Um, when the Gospel of John starts the story about Jesus, um, John starts with an interesting um, declaration when he says that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Nothing came to pass without Him. In Him was the light, the light of the world. And this light has removed darkness overcame darkness and it's interesting when 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 john finishes the work of jesus on earth and and jesus talks for the last time with the disciples he starts there as well when he says in john 17 chapter 2 for you granted him authority of all people everything starts with god god starts everything and that's exactly where, where Jesus starts this prayer when he says that he has the authority. Um, 
and, and, and not only that, he has all the power. Everything that is started is going to go on. It's going to continue. The work he started in your life is going to go on with that. Even now he's not physically on earth with us anymore. And in Philippians uh, 1, when, when Paul writes about these things, he said that he is sure that God will continue with the work that he started in all our lives. He will bring it to completion. And I think that was important for his disciples to understand that even though Jesus is going to weigh, what he started in our life is going to continue. What he started in your life is going to continue. Almost, almost as if he is saying that there's difficult times ahead. We're going in, in difficult situations in, and, and we are often going to feel powerless. We are often coming in situations where we're feeling alone, especially with Jesus leaving. But we're not on our own. God is going, is, is going to continue his work in your life and in my life. Second interesting thing that, that, we, that we can take from his prayer is the whole idea that, that our, our salvation lies in Jesus. Listen, listen to the way he says that, um, chapter 17, verse 3. Now, this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Um, the whole plan of John with his gospel is to tell people who Jesus was, to show people who Jesus was, what he did, how he treated people, how he cares, how he made a difference in people's lives. And now he says here at the end, he says, eternal life is to know Jesus. And we know that's not about knowledge in our head. Not, it's not a factual knowledge. It is now within a relationship with someone that cares for us, that loves us, that gave his life for us. Someone we can build our hope on, someone we can trust. That's where our salvation lies. And, and then he goes on and says, but if, if, if um, eternal life is important, and if you know Jesus, you will take his words and put it in your heart. You will, you will live his word, you will do something with his word. Interesting, when God talked to the Israelites just after he took them out of Egypt, he told them in Deuteronomy 6, he tells them, we talked about that last Sunday in London, that you've got to love the Lord with all your heart, all your mind, all your, all, all your strength. You've got to take this words I'm giving you today and put it in your heart. Because if you put it in your heart, you mean it. When you put it in your heart, it means this relationship is important to you. Crucial. For Jesus, it's all about the relationship we're having with him. Not about all the facts we know. Not about all the verses we can recite. It's about do you know him? Do you love him? Do you have a relationship with this Lord? And then Jesus does something interesting. He prays for us. <laughs> Um, how amazing is that to think that our faith is not is not only built on our effort and and everything we try to be to do and to not do um, and even if we can't manage sometimes to do the right thing I, I can't build our faith on that he actually says that he's working with us he's praying for us to keep on believing how amazing is that that you're not on your own what he said, he started, he's going to continue, he's going to finish in your life. And the main reason we need that is because we're not going with him, we're staying behind in this world. The idea was never to escape from this world, never. Our, our reality is that where we live is where we've got to be. This is our world. This is our neighborhood. This is the family the Lord put us. This is the friends I have. 
and to what Jesus is doing in your life has got to make a difference there. That's how it's supposed to be. And let's be honest, our life is not that bad. Our life is actually quite easy. We have food. Most of us have a work. In, in, in our lives here in the UK, uh, there's infrastructure in place that works most of the time. The things we, we, we complain about is mostly first world issues. None of us fear for our lives. I'm sure about that. Last night, none of us had to hide for bombs falling from above. I'm sure there's not many of you who activated your alarm last night. Um, I'm actually sure there's a lot of you who doesn't even have a security alarm in your house. I'm, I'm, I'm sure not a lot of you thought about opening the tap tomorrow this morning that there's not going to be water and if you've flipped the switch there's not going to be power. Yes, life and food and all, everything is more expensive but still we can listen to this message without fearing for our lives in peace. How amazing is that? But what's scary that all these good things, together with all the bad things that can happen in someone's life, has, has the potential to just take us away from the Lord. To just move us on a little bit. Because when, when the Bible talk about evil, when Jesus talked about the evil one year, we sometimes think of something else. But evil's got different shapes and different sizes. Therefore, is his, is his prayer to his father, protect them in the world, protect them from complacency. In the Old Testament, we see it quite often when, when the prophets came, they, they challenged Israelites because they were not worried about people in need. They were complacent with what they have, with, the, with their comfort. And they missed the need of people. So our prayer actually needs, has got to be, Father, protect us from the evil of becoming complacent. Protect us from the evil of not caring for others. Or maybe, maybe our prayer has got to be, Father, protect us from, from just moving away from you a little bit. Because, you know, and I know that less people are looking for the Lord. People don't talk about him in general. Less people are living from the word. And, and it's so easy that, that, that this tendency can have a negative impact on your relationship with the Lord, can, can take you away from the Lord just a little bit. So maybe our prayer's got to be, Father, protect us from the evil of moving away from you. Just a little bit. Lord, protect us from the evil of going to other places to look for security. To be nourished where we can put our hope on. Protect us from the evil to think that we can live without you in this world. That's the evil in our lives. To be honest with you, there's a lot of, there's a lot of powers competing for your soul. You've got to know it. You can call them what they want, what you want. But the main point is we need the Lord's protection. Jesus knew it and he prayed for it. And we must know that we are never alone in our struggles against all kinds of evils. We must never think that we don't need the Lord. We must never live in a way that we, we think we can, we can keep our faith in our own power. It's impossible. You're not going to manage. The other alternative is to move away from the world. To think there's a way we can be separated from the world. 
And that's something the churches throughout history struggled. In the 5th century after Christ, there was this group of Christians that decided they've got to get away from the world because the world is evil and to build themselves tree houses. Just to discover that evil is not <laughs> underneath on the ground. Evil is in our hearts, in our minds. There's no separation between Sunday and Monday in the Lord's world, in the Lord's kingdom. And, and Jesus, uh, Jesus says that we are sent to the world just as he was sent. Which means that we've got to take responsibility for, for the world and for the people of the world and for our responsibility in the world. That was always the plan. Which means that it's actually quite easy. You just need to get, go to work tomorrow morning, go to school. Go to the bank or the hospital or go into business as you usually do. That's where the Lord needs you. That's where you've got to make a difference. You're the best person among the, uh, among the people you work with to make that difference. Not because you're better. Not because you, 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 um, they are worse than you or you judge them. Because you have had an encounter with a, a God who loves you. A God who cares for you. A God to show you what love is all about. What life is all about. There's this quote that I came on, came on. It says, the Christian movement must be the living, breathing promise to society that it is possible to live out the values of Christ. That's what we've got to be. And the amazing thing is that that's what Jesus is praying for. That we are going to make that difference. That we will be that difference. Exactly in the same way that he was the difference. And he started it all. And then he says an interesting thing. If you look at the last few verses we read. Verse 21. It says. Uh, let's start with verse 20. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message. That all of them may be one. Father just as you are in me. And I am in you. May they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent us. Interesting thing. How will the world believe? When will the world believe? Jesus says that the world will believe if they see the way we love them. We love each other. We love God. That's the best, the best example. The best, best witness you can have is to love God, love people. That's going, to, that's going to change people's perception about God. That's going to change people's perception about Christianity. If they see that God made such a difference in your life and that it changed you, the way you treat them and the way you make them feel. And for that, we need each other. Jesus, Jesus are, are, are clear about that. He says we need each other's support. And we need each other's perspective. And we need to challenge each other. And we need to care for each other. Otherwise, it's impossible for us to, 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 to live this message. It's impossible for us to show the world that he cares for them as well. It's my prayer. That if you go back to John, to the, uh, to the Gospel of John, and you read again the stories about what Jesus did, how he treated people, how he cared, how he reached out, that you will realize that he want to do exact the same thing in your life, that he cares for you. That it's worthwhile to spend time with this Jesus because he loves you. And the work that he started in your life, that it's going to go on with it. He's going to finish it. So it doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter what's going on in your life. We've got a Lord who cares deeply for each one of us. Let's pray. Father, thank you that we may come in prayer this morning and that we know that you listen to our prayers. Because each one of us is important to you. And not only that, Lord Jesus, that you pray with us for each one of us, for what is going on in our lives, for, for where we are at this stage in our life, for, 
your love to live through us, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your word. Thank you that the word teaches us who you are. And that can change our lives. Lord Jesus, we want to ask this morning that you will keep on working in our lives. Keep on showing us who you are. Keep on giving us an encounter with this God that's real. And that it will change who we are and change what we think of you. Thank you that you are with us all the way. That you will finish what you started in our lives. Pray this in your holy name. Amen. We have opportunity to bring our offerings. Um, you've got all the information available down below. Thank you very much. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord shine his countenance upon you. And may the Lord give you peace. May you experience his love and his protection every step of the way. Amen. Amen.